the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Mm -hmm. We are here at AWS's Financial Services Symposium. All the big banks here, all the ecosystem, all the big players are here. David Poor is the General Manager of Financial Services Industry at Genesis. David, thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's Appreciate a pleasure, it. thank you for having me. So very targeted event here in New York City. Obviously, it's Tech Week yep. in general. All the VCs are here, all startups. But also, there's a lot of technology conversations here yes. at the Financial Services Symposium. It's all the big banks, it's all the big insurance, it's, every, it's all yep. the players. Correct. And and they are really have to set the table for the next 20 years of their innovation cycle. Yep. Generative AI is pointed a wave. They see it coming. Yep. But they're banks. They have a lot to protect. A lot they have a lot protect. to worry about. They're in the cloud. Yep. They got to have now a whole nother level of, I won't say re-architecting, but like continue to build out. Yep. Just like the clouds are building more CapEx. Yep. Take us through the current situation. So for us at Genesis, if you're not familiar with what we do, we are basically the kind of client connectivity technology actually of choice for most large and medium sized banks around the world. So we've got tremendous penetration in that space. For us- I just uh, to explain the service that you guys offer for folks that don't know. Yes. Uh, in terms of what we're up to, um, most of the large banks in the world are in the middle of that tr transition from kind of on-prem technologies and into cloud. And we are probably one third of the way through that journey. Um, the commitments are now very clear, but just in terms of the actual yeah. doing, it takes time. As you know, and you mentioned in your setup, for most banks to do something, whatever that something is, unless it's an immediate must do, things take two and a half to three years to get done. Yeah. Just based on size, scale, regulation, yeah. approval, QA, just takes time. They're big, they're huge, a lot yep. going on. Yeah, so th that's for us what we're up to. And your um, platform provides a lot of integrated services, like when you call the number, you use the app, that's Correct. Kind of core Correct. relationship. And if you think about how you did business with your bank like or your insurance company 10 years ago, let's face it, you either walked into a branch or you called them. That was it. <laughs> uh, and you still do that. But of course, you use in-app messaging, you're using chat, you're using social media, you're using all of these different devices, um, uh, platforms, media vehicles. And for us, we have to be on top of that and offer and integrate all of them together. Um, so it's a tremendous actually it's a tremendous time to be in that business. Mm. So let's get into some of the, the, the hot conversations because obviously there's a, a platform shift happening. And again, the cadence of transformation yep. is subject to the environment you're in. And yeah, it's a long time, but they, they try to move as fast as they can. They get, they yep. get a systematic approach. Correct. But the, now we have the conversational AI kind of vibe hit in. Yeah, it's everyone chat, but can I help you? Can questions, knowledge bank, you get an answer. People always ask this question, have an answer yep. ready. Now that's moving to generative. Correct. Where they can do more agent technology, not just chatbots. Yep. It's a lot more deeper experience yep. to the customers. How is that changing your business? And what do you guys, how do you look at that? And how do you bring that fast to the customer? Sure. I think there are two or three things going on here. One is imagine like your chatbot experience with a bank five years ago. Like I want a new credit card. And what would happen? Great. And there would be a link to their credit card, find me a credit card site. That's what they would do for you. It was right, pretty awful as an experience. Much, much better now. Like it's a, an incredible experience in terms of what you can get done with a chatbot or a voice bot uh, real time. For us, that has been important. But as you see in terms of generative AI capabilities, there are some bets now being made in terms of how that capability will apply, first of all, to employees within banks to keep them safer, to keep the bank safer and clients safer. But then the longer term bet is like virtual assistants, that next generation in terms of how they'll operate. Yeah. And in terms of those capabilities, for us, it means we need to think of both, let me put it this way, AI and apps and actual people, I think are the ingredients for the future of client experiences within banks. You're going to need all three. So for us, mer merging together those three ingredients together in a nice seamless package is our way forward. I'll explain why that's important and, and, and why that's Oh, sure. Um, so let's start with apps, for example. Yeah. Um, I mean, so today's Thursday, and I'm sure that we have all spent time so far this week either uh, paying a bill online, checking a balance, uh, buying or selling a stock, transferring money, checking a retirement account, probably all of those Where's things. That deposit. Right. <laughs> and how did we do it? On the app, right? We did it regardless of my app. The apps are awesome. But I'm not good at everything. And in fact, some things are actually bad at doing. So selling complex products, for example, they're really not good at that. You need actual people, skilled, um, experienced, licensed, et cetera. So the best practices that we see in the world today um, are, are more self-serve 
um, but actual people integrated those experiences when you need them and guidance from AI for the experienced uh, people as well to read a disclosure, to say, you know, to track for sentiment, to offer up suggestions. Um, it just makes for a better, smoother experience. So we think that's the direction forward. All right, so give, give me the, the top three re areas that AI is reshaping the customer experience. Obviously, the app led, but apps now are getting generous, so they're getting fused. So, yeah, I get that. It's a workload. Yep. Any new things that you so, see emerging? So honestly, I, I would classify these things into three three areas, okay. if that's okay. So here's, here's, here's my three. One is somewhat conceptual. And the conceptual is, here's all the great things that generative AI might be able to do. But it's conceptual. The actual use of AI today, in that it's not, it's, it's not brand new. It's been around for a little while. And at Genesis, we have actual capabilities like predictive routing will tell you where we think a first client contact should be sent. Predictive engagement will say, this is why we think a client is calling. Agent assist hums in the background and like assists in conversation. So that, that actual uh, capability is very real as well. Then the final piece though, I would say is kind of like worries, headlines and concerns. And the worries, headlines and concerns, whether they're ethical, philosophical, data, security, fraud, protection, deep fake voice, um, all of these things are super important. So I think those three areas are where there's like attention. What's, what is the um, right. view of obviously fraud detection? It's been one of those things that's costly. I mean, it's always, it's like the debt. It never goes down. It yep. goes up. It yep. seems to go up. Correct. Yeah. Always. Yeah, it's like prevent. And now you got more service here. You've you mentioned gen Genev AI, more attack vectors, people. More uh, vehicles and tools for fraudsters. Yep. So many yep. areas. So yep. how are you seeing that? We've heard some great conversations here at the show around how pattern recognition, how some of the indexing of the content could give you better uh, augmentation to prediction yep. uh, on gen generative prevention. Yep. yep. <laughs> um, where do you see the protection coming from uh, or any improvements for the good guys? Sure. Well, Remember the bad guys, all it takes is one time. Correct. And, and as you know, for a bank, I mean, fraud, data breaches, etc. I just, you just can't have them. I mean, it, it's just a non-negotiable. And frankly, from a uh, a genesis standpoint if you started any conversation with the bank and your lead-in was fraud and security you'd be okay it, it, it's, it's a fine conversational area to start with for us uh, there are a couple of areas one a genesis cloud offering is built on and in aws cloud so for us the kind of finest examples of data security kind of protocols qa all exist within those environments and we replicate them the second thing is you've got to partner with the right experts in this space so for us, our capabilities kind of live alongside what you would get from like a Nuance or from a pin drop. So we're super um, aligned with what they do, how it integrates into our technology. So we're going to bring the best of what we do and kind of integrations and go to markets collaboratively with those experts. And you got to make sure they're all vetted, everything's kind of, Correct. all kind of tightened up there. Yes. Is there an extension of you? You Correct. Yeah. yeah. And oftentimes we'll like paper or something where it's like our, you know, contract plus, you know, a pin drop solution added in together. So yeah, we, we are very tightly integrated. Well, I got to tell you, one of the things I really like about the new banking apps now is, is that the user experience is 10 times better Much better. than it was just a few years ago. Yes. Even I have multiple banks that I use and, and yep. other multiple, I think I have five different banks. I'm weird with the banks, mm -hmm. but I, but they all have different apps. But I'm kind of getting it now. They're all kind of seeing the same. But your point, you're right. There's some areas where I would like to get some help. Yep. So agent technology, we love the direction of where agents technology is yep. going. We think yep. that's going to be great augmentation to humans. Yep. Because um, once they figure out what I'm deficient in, they can yep. actually replicate that. Yes. <laughs> and John struggles with this one thing okay, yes. all the time. They, yes. <laughs> the old dog can't learn new tricks, as they well, say. Well, well you know. this, this, maybe you don't need to learn if the technology really like yeah. serves itself up and makes sense. So we see some really interesting examples of kind of app developments around the world. So, for example, if you think about how you have a problem today and maybe you can't get your solution on your app, what you'll typically do is put the app down, crank open a laptop, try and go to the website, try and if something then doesn't work, finally call. Drive everyone to contact within the app. So contact within the app means press a button, like now you're going to be connected with a live agent. But it happens within the app, so there's no authentication, it's all secure. But they also give you options. Do you want video call or just standard call? So if you're querying somebody about, say, a, a fee, you probably don't want to look at the person you're trying to negotiate with to get a fee waived. <laughs> 
if you're talking about, say, your financial advisor or your time, yeah. you probably want to see the person. Yeah. So yeah, they, they, they offer up these... Human secu- interaction. Correct. So there, there's like a case for video within banking, which has been like looking for good use cases for a little while. Yeah. But we're starting to see two or three really good use cases uh, for video, for example, and that kind of secure connection from yeah. within the app. Yeah. We think there's a few more good things coming that are super interesting. I mean, and you're also seeing a lot of group behavior. I was just uh, doing a, a report. I haven't published it yet. Yep. Where millennials and the Gen Zs, they want to hang out on Discord audio lines while they work together. Yes. Yep. So you have this kind of like, so you can you want to have the video or in those collaborative Correct. moments. Correct. You know, uh, when you're like pissed off at someone, you're like, well, I don't want to see a face. Yeah. You know, I'm refund. Where's that refund? No, I hate you to know. age myself, but if I think of, say, my boys who grew up and graduated high school uh, and into college as like, you know, COVID was happening, yeah. they've all grown up with Zoom. And of course, now they're graduating, my older son's in the workplace. Yeah. Um, but they're used to those kind of video interactions for certain things, and it's just second nature. So I think there's a lot of opportunity there as well in terms of like how you communicate with your bank. That's going to be changing. Talk about the um, heavy lifting involved in the banking area. And I want to I bring up that because Amazon's known for like, oh, under, undifferentiated heavy lifting. But I noticed that one area that's not innovative in my banking mm. app, I won't say the name, I don't want to name names, <laughs> one of the apps, yes. is how they handle the documents, the statements, the PDFs. With multimodal AI coming, I can imagine there's going to be now more energy around handling all the back office um, toil. Yep. What's your view on how Genesis is looking at document management, tech oh, analytics, sure. so, unstructured data coming in now with images? Sure. So let me give you an example. I, yeah. I think you'll like this. Back to my kind of bank app example. So I mentioned we have like our predictive engagement software, which is AI based that says, this is why we think you're calling. So in this like example, and it's real, um, production technology with banks around the world right now is you're in the app, secure call, I've got a question, I want to, well, the AI will think, we think you want to change your address. So while you're kind of waiting to be connected to a live person, the AI then pops up to you on your app, here's the address change form, fill it out, do you still want to continue with this call? And of course, in most cases, the answer is, well, I don't actually want to speak to someone in the bank. Great, you gave me the form, awesome, click, click, away I go, done. Yeah. Um, so putting that kind of forms hell into kind of real life flows and use cases, I think is going to take away some of that pain. It'll take some time, but the technology and the use cases are there right now, if that example works. That's a great example. Um, first of all, I, David, I really appreciate this conversation. It's fantastic. It's real world. It's not... Yeah you know, hyped up AI kind of conversations, which yep. is many of them. Of course, we promote a lot of those hyped up conversations because it's, this, this wave is coming, no doubt about oh, it. Oh, sure, it's sure. a platform shift. Yep. It's yes. definitely happening. Yes. So orchestrating experiences, these are Correct. very important things. Yes. What's going on at the show? Because what you're getting at here, kind of like, not to riff in real time here, but I will. Mm. You're starting to see the vertical nature of things, end-to-end workflows. You just mentioned that secure call in the app. Yep. That's a cool concept that's, hey, well, just keep it secure in line, yep. end to end. Why not? Why so, even go through the internet? It's just a direct connection. And, and back to kind of cultural changes. So what I just mentioned, secure call in app. So the bank I reference, I won't say their name again, 92% of their contacts now are coming via that secure contact within the app. So there's like a little bit of consumer kind of like, hey, this capability is now available. A little bit of adoption like prompting, yeah. but it's going to be very real. I think that's how we're going to be contacting and connecting with the banks over the next two years. Like it's happening real yeah. time. I think that's a moat opportunity yeah. for a yes. bank. If yes. you can say, hey, if security is a concern, yep. let's just address it off right off the, out, of the, out of the gate. Correct. Yep. Direct connections, maybe encryption, unbreakable yep. encryption, pre-quantum, Correct. maybe post-quantum, it look different. Yep. But again, that's a use case. And yes. you start to see this verticalization Correct. In the cloud, you look at some of these AI yep. systems that are being yep. built. Agreed. They know the workload is well scoped. Yep. It just has more data and more stuff to do. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So what's happening here? So you we agree on that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good data point. We'll take that back into the Q research team. What's going on here at the event? Because this event is very targeted. We're talking the biggest names are here. We're in New York City. Yep. We're talking about JP Morgan. We're talking about all the top players are here. Yep. Uh, I saw the president of Bloomberg's here. They're talking about how they're handling stuff. It's AI, machine learning, old school, old school, a couple of years ago. Yep. AI now setting the table for yep. next gen yep. with now cloud migration continuing Yes. for full distributed computing operations. What yep. are the top conversations in these banks and this, these, in this ecosystem? Well, you know, one of the things we mentioned already is security, fraud protections, et cetera. The other is taking conceptual ideas, notions, capabilities, and turning them into real life use cases. 
and um, we see a lot of that happening here today as people talk and compare notes. And I think there's going to be a whole bunch more of that happening uh, over the next uh, few weeks and months. Of course, what people also want, they don't necessarily want proof of concept. People want to see proof of adoption. Yeah, yeah. And so when they talk to me, and for me it's a global role, show me things that are happening elsewhere. Yeah. And you mentioned JP Morgan Chase. They don't want to mystery shop like what Bank of America are doing. They know what each other are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like they're all talking. Right. Go to Israel, go to Turkey, go to New Zealand, Sweden. Then you're going to find some crazy things that are being done yeah. in the banking space that are just unusual um, that could be adopted at scale in North America. All right. Throw me out an, uh, an, an experience uh, that's being orchestrated through your platform that's super cool that we haven't heard about yet or your favorite coolest experience oh, um, or a few of them all right, so, so, so here's, here's a cool one and this is happening in the Middle East right now so think of a company like NCR who like make ATM machines right um, so for us at Genesis that kind of end point which is an ATM machine is just something we can plug into our capabilities right. so what we have now with this next generation of technology though is no debit card or anything else like you just wander up to the atm machine flash your give it a high five and it recognizes recognizes your palm print it's okay. you can then say to yourself well i want to actually talk to a banker real time and there you are at the atm machine talk press the button there's a banker flashing up on screen and you can say to the banker look i need twenty thousand dollars cash right now yeah. override the daily withdrawal limits and out pops twenty thousand dollars cash so you can yeah. go off and pay your school fees or whatever else <laughs> it is so real life technology um kind of like connectivity ai service modes that are kind of new and interesting but in place today i had someone on the cube once said this is over 10 years ago everything in the future that was on star trek will be invented except yeah. for teleportation uh, but pretty much we're everything's pretty much very sci-fi like from just 20 years ago from just 20 years ago i totally agree i mean you, you couldn't believe the way that we live our lives via our banking apps today it's, yeah. it's like life-changing technologies all right so yeah. final question for you yeah. I mean, great conversation uh, if i asked you what you would see changing radically the most in the next five years as it's been said here on uh, here and any other, other events we've been to that the next five years will be radical change yeah with generative ai so if the, if the dots connect and the accelerated computing kicks in yeah what does the next five years what kind of change so, will we see so I, I think the virtual assistant is probably going to be the thing that really kicks off um and the generative you because you, you need a simple thing that's the end result of all of this kind of intellectual capital and for banks a virtual assistant that can handle payments um can do uh retirement planning that can like help you run your small business um is voice based integrated into other aspects of your life i think that's going to be the future David, you guys are doing a great job. I love how you're orchestrating these kinds of experiences mm -hmm. on behalf of, of the user, the end game, which is the customer. And the mode is yep. there's be security and experience. Indeed. And thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's a pleasure, man. Thank okay, you. Okay, fantastic event here. The Cube's all-day coverage mm -hmm. continues. New York City at AWS Financial Services Symposium. I'm, I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. Thank you.